What's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys a video. As you doing, what good cool is more merciful, episode 2. In the last episode, we covered the events from the start of Dragon Ball to 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai. With Goku being more merciful, many things have changed. Tao was safe from becoming a cyborg and was trained with Tien, which made him stronger. Monster Carrot was never sent to the moon and actually recruited remnants from the Red Ribbon Army into his own rabbit mob. We return to this timeline, now. While eating, Goku senses that something is wrong with everyone else, sharing a similar sentiment. They all rush away and arrive to see the dead body of the tournament announcer to the shock of everyone. They don't know who could have done this, but they realise that whoever did it will probably be a threat to them later on. They should all stay cautious of what's about to happen. Everyone begins to go their separate ways just like normal, them all promising to reunite and fight even harder when they meet with each other again. Over the rabbit mob after an embarrassing defeat in the tournament, Violet would suggest that they gather the Dragon Balls and wish for a bunch of money, which I'm sure Monster Carrot would agree to. He asked Violet, Yellow, Silver and Blue to all go out and gather them, which they agreed to do. Unfortunately for the rabbit mob, they didn't know that another party were currently scouting out for the Dragon Balls. Symbol and Tamarine comes across them one by one, taking them out, killing them one after the other. The only one who's actually able to do something is General Blue in a pseudo gag manga fighting style. Tambourine begins to beat up Blue and leaves him battle damage and broken on the ground left for dead. Before I can kill him, King Piccolo telepathically contacts his son and tells him the news that Simba has been killed. He'll need to be avenged. Tambourine agrees and flies away to find him. General Blue manages to power through all his injuries and begins to try and move as fast and as far away as possible. He manages to barely make it back to Monster Kara in critical condition with blood all over his body. He tells him that it was the demon before falling down and dying. This alerts Monster Carrot as he realises that he needs to go and find someone to help him. Meanwhile, Tambourine and Yajirobe will be fighting. Due to Yajirobe's strength, he is able to overpower Tambourine, however he lacks in speed necessary to catch the demon. Exploiting his wings allows Tambourine to begin to overpower and eventually slaughter the Fatso. He then takes the Dragon Ball back to King Piccolo. With only one Dragon Ball remaining, Piccolo decides to go himself, alongside Tambourine. Goku senses the oncoming powers and feels the sinister key radiating off of them. He gets ready for the battle as the Demon King stands in front of him. The fight plays out relatively the same, with Goku being left for dead and Piccolo again his youth and killing Shenron. Since Shenron has been summoned, the Z Fires all know something bad is about to happen. They don't know what to do about it currently, so they remain where they are for the time being. With Goku badly damaged, it isn't looking good for him since there isn't many people around, and no one knows that he's on the verge of death. Well, almost no one. Monster Kara rocks up on the scene, having finally found Goku. He tells him what happened, according to Blue, and Goku tells him about Korin's, and he promises to help. He turns Goku into a Kara and rushes away to Korin's tower, but Goku will get the same training, though it will be slightly delayed due to him training at a later moment in time. When Piccolo appears on the television, everyone's eyes will be drawn to it, and they all rush away to go and stop Piccolo destroying West City. With Yamcha currently disabled, he is basically left useless, or more useless than in canon. So he'd ride on Pterodactyl to get Bulma and her parents out of there, in case everything goes sideways. Roshi and Krillin bump into Tien and Chiaotzu, who are also there to fight. None of them know where Goku are, but since they know Shenron was summoned, they assume the worst has happened. From behind them, they sent two power levels quickly moving towards them, and turn to see a pillar go overhead and down jump Tao and Shen. They ask what they are doing there, and Shen explains. Mutayito is his master as well, and he knows it'll be dangerous if Piccolo takes over the world. This doesn't mean they're allies now, which Roshi smiles at, telling him he won't have it any other way. King Piccolo lands with Tambourine, and after spitting out Drum, the fight is on. Roshi in buff form is everyone's best bet against Piccolo, as is Tien, but everyone is just getting beaten. It takes the combined efforts of Tao, Shen, Kuroin, and Chiaotzu to overpower and kill Tambourine. Drum, on the other hand, is a different story. Tien migrates to fight Drum, doing his best to hold him off, doing quite well. Drum sells the advantage, of course, but Tien is doing much better than he would be. Chiaotzu tries to paralyze Drum, but it doesn't work, and leaves him wide open for Drum to rush straight at him and hit him hard. The weakling grabs onto his fist and leaps onto Drum, beginning to glow. Tien tells Chiaotzu not to do it, but it's too late, as he self destructs, taking Drum down with him. Everyone begins to gang up on King Piccolo, but he's having none of it. He powers up to the max, declaring that he won't allow anyone to get in his way. He unleashes a blast that hits Krillin and kills the bold dwarf. Roshi looks towards Shen, and they both nod, knowing what must be done. They rise quicker out, they both use a combined Marfa Burn that begins to sweep up King Piccolo. Just the combined efforts, it works, and King Piccolo is successfully sealed away just as Roshi and Shen die. 
the threat out of the way, Tien tells Tao that he should bury them. Tao doesn't want to talk about her stuff though, as he merely grabs a lamppost and leaps on it, getting away. While distracted, Piano takes the opportunity to run up behind Tien and grab the rice cooker. Just as Tien spots him, he breaks the rice cooker open, and out comes King Piccolo. Tien gets into a fighting stance, ready to give his all in a losing battle. Before he can though, Goku arrives, telling Tien to get back, which the Triclops agrees to. Goku and Piccolo begin a fight fairly similar to canon, except that fight has one change. Just Tien isn't crippled from his fight, he isn't used as a human shield, so Goku doesn't get his legs and arm broken. In the fight, Goku does go for that massive Ozara fist, however he makes sure not to kill Piccolo, but instead really badly hurt him. He then stands over King Piccolo and tells him to leave his friends alone. Although Tien argues they should kill him, Goku's mind is made up, and King Piccolo flees. Goku would venture off and would meet Kami like normal, where he's offered training to beat Piccolo, which Goku agrees to. And so the time skip would arrive, where a couple changes would arrive with the other characters. Shen and Roshi begin to recreate their friendship after they put the whole petty rivalry aside to stop Piccolo. They'd probably do some light training not to get rusty, but with the new generation taking over, they decide to take things easy. Tao's relationship with the Z Fighters is quite a strange one. If I had to compare him to someone, I'd say he's very similar to Android Saga Vegeta in terms of loyalty and camaraderie with the Z Fighters. He'd be about the same strength as Cyborg Tao after the three years. King Piccolo would be weaker than Piccolo Jr. was after the three year time skip. This is due to the fact that there is a statement that mentions how Piccolo Jr. was stronger than King Piccolo, but less evil. Tien would be stronger than he was after three years. This is due to the fact that he was stronger when he started training since Tao trained him prior to the 22nd, so it means Tien and Chelsea get better gains. At the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, everyone meets up with each other like normal before the fighters all enter the tournament. There would of course be some more fighters in the tournament like General Blue, Colonel Silver and Colonel Violet. I think Roshi and Chen would also enter since King Piccolo is entering, and they still hold a grudge. Roshi won't enter as Jackie Chun this time, since Tien did out in, in the last tournament, so there'd be no point. The preliminaries arrive, and since there are so many people, they do mean fight each other in the preliminaries. There's no point in covering them though, as I'll leave the final roster the same, and just say Chi Chi got lucky. Tao and Tien's fight isn't as aggressive as it was in canon, with Tao doing our malicious intent. He'd have a fight with Tien, with the Tricorps beating him easily, and bringing out his old sensei. Tao might try a dirty don't on par sneak attack, but nothing illegal or fatal. After Goku and Chi Chi have their typical fight, it'd be Kron's time to shine against King Piccolo. Before he enters the arena, he begins to get flashbacks when he was killed by him last time. Before even entering the arena, he forfeits, which King Piccolo sees as a shame. He was hoping to have a rematch with him as he grins sinisterly. It just makes Kron gulp. The arms will get clapped by Hero, and we arrive at the semi-finals. When Tien and Goku are their fight, Tien is doing a bit better than he originally was, leading to Goku removing his weight clothing much earlier. Tien must still rely on the multi-form technique though, which leads to his downfall, displaying his power in fall. King Piccolo fights against Hero, where Kami attempts to use a Mafubo. Of course, Piccolo then reverses it and seals away Kami, where he eats a container. Goku then goes up against Piccolo, where they begin their battle. It isn't as close as Goku vs Jr. was in canon, as Piccolo is weaker for reasons already mentioned. So Goku manhandles him and ends up getting Kami out of Piccolo's grasp much earlier. Goku ends up beating Piccolo down, dodging the blast that originally pierced his shoulder. He then punches Piccolo in the face, knocking him to the ground. Kami tells Goku to hurry and kill him, but yet again, Goku shows off his merciful nature, telling Piccolo to leave and get stronger. Then Goku would leave on Kinto Um with Chi Chi like normal. The 5 year time skip arrives like normal, with not that many changes. I'll cover everyone's power levels and then explain why they're like that for you guys as we continue moving. King Piccolo 372, Roshi 216, Shen 208, Tao Pai Pai 312, Chiaotsu 108, Tien 325. Everyone else's power levels the same. King Piccolo's power level would be this because he is weaker than Junior as mentioned, so it stands to reason they'd be weaker here. Since Shen and Roshi have a friendly rivalry going on, they probably do some light training with each other as well, and not trusting Piccolo to be out there. Tao Pai Pai were training in solitude, only killing people he has vendettas against them, so that would give him some gains. Just like in canon, a reunion will be held at Kame House, with the usual people going. Meanwhile, Raditz shows up, meets and threatens Piccolo before heading over to Kame House. He one-taps Krillin and Goku, and then kidnaps Gohan, just like normal. When Raditz places Gohan in the space pod, he hears footsteps behind him and turns around to see King Piccolo. He scoffs that he really does have a death wish, but Piccolo tells him not to be so rash. He heard how he threatened Goku by stealing his son, but if you want him to submit, that won't do. A physical attack can't break that man's will, but an emotional one may be enough to convince him to go with Raditz. Raditz is skeptical, asking what's in it for Piccolo, and the demon states that with Goku gone, the planet is his, so the deal is made. 
Meanwhile, without Piccolo appearing on Kame House to make a truce with Goku, he won't rush away as fast as possible, but instead stay with Bulma, Krillin, and Roshi to devise a plan. They come up with the idea of him grabbing Raditz' tail, which would paralyze him, and allow Roshi and Krillin to attack him enough to where he's forced to flee. Remember, Goku won't want Raditz dead, so the plan would have to revolve around that. So the three all rush away to stop Raditz, with Roshi flying on Krillin's back. They arrive at the pod, landing with Goku, telling Raditz to give back his son. The Saiyan agrees to, pointing over to the pod that he is in. Goku begins to approach the pod, seeing his son through the glass. As he gets closer, Piccolo rushes in and kicks Goku, knocking him backwards. Goku looks to see Piccolo with his hand over the pod, smiling. He tells Goku that he knows how hard it is to lose a child, so Goku can sympathize. And with that, he unleashes a blast, consuming the space pod, and subsequently, killing Gohan. Seeing his son dead enrages Goku as his power begins to rise. He definitely get a rage boost as he shouts he won't let him get away with this. He rushes at Piccolo, elbowing him really hard, knocking him out immediately. Raditz scans his brother's power level and is shocked when it hits 900. Goku rushes at Raditz and begins to attack him, which Raditz can take care of, but he'd have to actively block instead of messing around. Slowly, Goku's rage boost begins to subside as Raditz beats on his brother more and more. Krillin grabs Goku and tackles him to the ground as Roshi rushes in. He tells the student to hurry up and prepare the plan as he charges at Raditz who throws a punch at him. Roshi pulls a move out of the Dragon Ball Super Manga and ducks under the punch. He begins to dodge and distract Raditz as best as he can as Goku and Krillin charge at the strongest Kamehameha hearts they can. Roshi grabs Raditz's tail and tells him to do it now, which they do, firing the combined Kamehameha. It's a direct hit that buries Raditz deep into a crater, his armor is sinned as she lays badly damaged, unconscious at the mercy of everyone else. And that's the thing I'll be here, make sure you like and subscribe and comment on what's going to happen in the next episode. Do you think Raditz will turn good, and what do you think will happen with Piccolo? Will he turn good as well? Let me know. And so yeah, bye!